Okay, so we have our little practice data set here of a hundred customer records. Right, we have some customer IDs, we have some continuous variables, and we also have some categorical variables. Uh, our goal is to be able to generate the statistics that will allow us to make this final table. Uh, for now, we're not going to worry about formatting. That's you know making it look pretty. That's a little bit later in the video. But uh, let's take a look at two ways that we might go about uh, generating these statistics. So the first way is we can use something called the data analysis tool pack. So if we go to a data here, if we go to data here, uh, if here's the data analysis tool pack under analysis. If this isn't added on into your version of Excel yet, uh, just Google how to activate the data analysis tool pack in your version of Excel. It takes a few moments, it's no big deal. So let's activate this. We see we have some options for statistical test and statistical analysis. And in particular here, we just want some descriptive statistics. So mine's already pre-selected uh, because I already did this before. But the input range I selected here, uh, G1 down to, in this case, G101. That's the entirety of the data set. That's grouped by columns, and I clicked labels in the first row because sure enough, yes, I have a label in the first row, and I don't want it to include that in the analysis. Uh, and then I want some summary statistic, uh, statistics, and I want to put it in a new, uh, a new worksheet. So let's go ahead and hit OK. And there we go. Right, we have all of the statistical values that we will need uh, for all 100 observations. Right, here's the mean. We have actually we have even more than we need, right? So we could start then copying and pasting this stuff uh, into you know a more structured format, so that we could you know get our final table. Now that satisfies our need for the statistics for all of the players, but we also want it for free battle pass and these subgroups. So we see here uh, that we have luckily it's all very tidy right now, right? All the membership status is organized so we can take advantage of that if it wasn't uh, we could just click you know this uh, click here customer ID or you could select the whole data set and go to home and you could go to sort and filter and do a custom sort and then we could have actually then sorted it on membership status it's already sorted but we could do it anyways there we go now it's sorted alphabetically it rearranged the data, but it's all still tidy. Now, since it's all organized uh, nicely, we can still use the data analysis tool pack here. So go to data, go to data analysis, descriptive statistics, yet again. Uh, this time, though, uh, we're going to not have labels in the first row. And of course, we have to just select the subgroups, right? And since they're all continu uh, continuously connected now because it's been sorted, uh, we will get our subgroups as we need. So I'm just going to show it once because we'd have to do this three times, once for each group. Um, but no big deal, right? So we make another worksheet. It's not labeled this time because I didn't have the label selected, but we could uh, easily um, identify it. Uh, the mode uh, probably skipped. I, I presume, I think it's because there might be multiple modes uh, for this particular uh, statistic, or there is, they're all single, singular values. Uh, not a value that, we, not a statistic we needed for our task anyways, but here we go. So we could just repeat this two more times for each of the subgroups, copy and paste stuff over into a single table, and voila, right? We could start working on building something nice like this. Now, I think this approach actually is a little tedious, even though the data analysis tool pack is common. Uh, I don't like that we might have to reorganize the data set, or what if we have, you know, a bunch of subgroups that we want to uh, analyze. It could be tedious to kind of rerun this many times. It could be prone to error if you selected something wrong. So next, let's take a look at using some Excel functions and formulas uh, to build this table. Okay, so let's actually use some Excel formulas to uh, generate all of these statistics. If you look up here, we're going to use something called the filter function to help facilitate this process. So what did I do? First, I hand typed everything that you see, it's bold here. So I typed in you know, all of these statistics that I wanted. 
I typed in, and importantly, you'll see here in a moment, you'll notice that I have all players, but then I also have free battle pass and elite battle pass. And for the moment here, you'll notice I am using the exact same convention of typing as it's shown up in the data set, meaning you'll see there's no spaces between battle and pass. That's going to be important in a moment. So clearly I've already built these functions out. Um, we can see that I'm replicating the uh, statistics in the completed table. Uh, we haven't formatted them, and that's we're not going to worry about that for now, but you know, how did I go about doing this? Well, let's first take a look at all players. So here I used a simple count function. So we're counting all the observations uh, in from G2 down to G101. And there's no missing values, so we count up all 100. Great. And then we just proceed using the same basic strategy with the average function the median function, standard deviation, std div dot s. The dot s is important because uh, the way you calculate a standard deviation depends on whether you're talking about uh, you have the whole population or you have a sample. In our case, we have just a sample of 100 customers, so it calculates that properly. We use the min function, the max function, and finally we use the skew function. So structure is exactly the same for all 100 observations. We're selecting the same range. We're just using the different Excel formulas that are available. Now, for those of you who are not as familiar with, like, why do I have these dollar signs in front of the G and the 2 and the G and the 1? Uh, that makes this an absolute reference, meaning typically if you make a function in Excel and then you drag the function or somewhere else, it'll replicate the function, but it will uh, shift one down, one over, however many you move, uh, the cell references as well. But in my case, when I did this here, I didn't want that. So I, I first built this count function, and then I dragged it down here. Of course, it's if you look, see, it's replicating the count. And notice that the cells didn't shift, right? I locked them into place, so it's still selecting the right range. And then I just changed this part and switch it to average. So that allowed me to sort of conveniently drag it all the way down and just make a few quick edits instead of having to reselect the range a bunch of times. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward and we can appreciate there's some basic, you know, statistical functions in Excel. Now, how did I do this for free? Uh, again, the strategy is going to be exactly the same for all of them other than just we're using, you know, different functions. So let's just examine uh, the average. Now, if we look at the average, we'll see that there's a lot more going on, right? So let's kind of break this apart. First, we do see in the end, we're doing the average function, right? It's on the furthest outside. And we can also see that it's selecting G2 to G101. So clearly we're taking an average of that, but somehow it's only taking an average of from that entire range, only those uh, membership statuses that had the word free. It's, you know, those 73 people. How did it do that? Well, we use the filter function. So the filter function says, all right, select the array that you want to, you know, do whatever other function that you're going to do. But then what's your criteria? In this case, we were able to, you know, we, we selected a same sized, that's important, has to match the size uh, array here. So with membership status. And then I said it has to be equal. So only calculate the average filtering out anything that's, you know, uh, anything that's not what's in cell P3. Right. P3 here is the word free, which I typed exactly the same as it was in here. So it's looking for all of the instances of free and then it skips these others as well. Great. Now, if you look a little closer here, uh, I, you just trust me, the median standard deviation, it's all the same idea, just using different functions. Now, somehow I was able to select all of these functions and then if I drag it over, Oh, wow, it, it works automatically, right? I'm able to get the battle pass and the elite battle pass. Now, how did that work? Well, let's examine the elite battle pass uh, mean here. How did that happen? So if you look in here, you'll notice that, of course, I had the absolute references on the G, the 2, the G, the 101, the H, the 2, the H101, and so on. But I had a slightly different reference uh, approach. I had a partial absolute reference here for uh, the term at the top. I, I did not have a dollar sign in front of the R but I did have a dollar sign in front of the three. So what happened? As I dragged the function over, uh, three stayed in place, so it still kept referring to row three here. Oops, there we go. 
And but for R, since I don't have a dollar sign in front of it, when I when I when I dragged this function over, instead of referencing P, well, when I dragged it over one, it moved from P to Q, and then from Q to R. Hence, this partial absolute reference allowing me to conveniently uh, build out uh, my functions quickly. So. Another moral of the story here is you have to be attentive and mindful of use of absolute and partial absolute references in Excel. So at this point, I you know I typed all this stuff out. I have the values. The formatting's not nice, but we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, here's just another way that we can uh, quickly calculate and summary, uh, summarize statistics uh, in Excel. And there's a bunch of other ways as well. I'm not going to exhaustively go through every conceivable way, but now you have uh, two ways. For those of you who are familiar with um, Excel pivot tables, uh, Excel pivot tables would seem to be a pretty good approach here. The one problem is some of these statistics that we want, like skewness, isn't by default uh, easily uh, generated inside Excel pivot tables. So in this particular instance, because of our needs of the kind of statistics we wanted, um, I'm not going to be using a pivot table this time. All right. So next, let's take a look at how to format this stuff. And then uh, we'll wrap up actually taking a look at how we could maybe do this using uh, different software. So regardless of what manner we use to generate the statistics that we want in uh, Excel, uh, we do still need to you know, finish up and make sure the table that we actually want to publish in report is tidy and follows APA format or whatever you know, formatting requirements uh, given corporate structure or whatever it wants to use. So what we're imagining here is we have built our results like in a table but it's not tidy right it doesn't look the way we want and this is our goal down here we want it to look this way so what's our strategies well pretty simple we can just use all the basic formatting tools that are available to us in uh, Excel so just a matter of preference which order you want to work in I switched it to times up here uh, highlight the regions in the font region I can change whether or not we have borders. I'm doing that as we're chatting here. Uh, also, I have a preference where I like to, rather than a colorless filter, I can fill the cell with actual white so that looks a little better. I can also select these columns. And if I right click, I can change the column width. So let's, for now, like, I'll change it to say 12. And then clearly we still have some rounding issues. So let's see, by default, we're, most of these are to two digits. So we look up top here and just clean that up. All right. And then for these five uh, statistics, we want, actually want to show dollar amounts. That's, so we can switch it to currency like that. So remember, when we did all this formatting, we didn't like, change the data. We just changed how it was being presented. Uh, so there we go. We can you know, do a little editing as needed here. This is a flat file. There's no cell references anymore. Uh, so it's not messing or altering any of the results. And then, of course, we could just add in you know, our final formatting, like table one. Summary, blah, blah, blah. I, I trust that you understand that that's not appropriate for you to do. We should label it clearly. And here we go. Very nice. So there you go. Uh, it takes a little while. Uh, sometimes formatting uh, things in Excel can be a little tedious when you're new to it. But pretty quick, you develop like a workflow that works for you to sort of expedite this process. So I moved quick, but just remember that everything you need is pretty much up here under the home and in this ribbon right here. So enjoy. So alternatively, of course, we could use a variety of different statistical software to accomplish the same basic task. Uh, just quickly, let's take a look at doing this in SPSS, something that we don't utilize uh, formally in 642, but a common piece of statistical software uh, utilized regularly. So we have the file open, and we see what we want here. We want spending on season, and of course we have our membership status. So uh, what we can do is we can go to analyze. Oh, I gotta move my recorder. Sorry, analyze. We can go to descriptive statistics, right? And 
this frequency menu here is where we are going to be able to get a lot of the descriptive statistics we want. Uh, funny enough, the descriptives one doesn't have quite as many options. The frequency is more complete. So, but we also want to split our results by subgroup. So first, let's analyze this, run descriptives, frequencies, uh, select our variable, spending. We don't need a frequency table, but we check statistics. We have a variety of options, and in our particular case, we just want the mean, median, standard deviation, min, max, and skewness. Okay, there's clearly other options here as well, and we can hit OK and we can run this analysis. Pops up in a new screen, and voila, here's our stuff. Oh, okay, but now we want to do it for all the subgroups. There's a variety of ways to do this. Uh, a quick way to do this here is just go to data. We're going to split the file, which, funny enough, it doesn't actually split the file. It just makes it so that when we run things, it'll break it into the relevant subgroups here. We go to Organize Output by Groups. So what are our groups? Well, in our case, it was membership status. Now that we've activated this, now if we go back and rerun that exact same analysis, so I change nothing, hit OK, and here we go. We also now have our frequencies by the different tiers. So you can double click into uh, this output from SPSS and do a lot of editing, but it's, it's a little clunky. I don't really enjoy it. So another option here is we simply go to, we can right click, we can uh, copy as an Excel worksheet, just to illustrate this idea. And I opened up Excel uh, after it was copied, and I simply just paste it in. And it doesn't look great, right? It's a little messy. But you can imagine now I could copy and paste all of the uh, different subgroups, and then I could go through the process of cleaning up and tidying up the structure of uh, the look of this particular table using uh, Excel's formatting tools. Just personal preference, I find it to be a bit uh, quicker and easier to work with uh, for final formatting in Excel rel uh, instead of SPSS. Uh, but there are ways to do more advanced tuning in SPSS as well. So that wraps it up. Uh, thank you for checking this out. And you know, if you want to play around with SPSS for any course stuff, uh, let me know. Uh, I'm always happy to support that. And you do have free access uh, as SDSU students.